Welcome to another episode of Sports and Discourse with your host, Derek Stevenson. And man, somebody has got to call Nick Saban and tell him, it's okay, man. We understand. You've been having all the recruits for all of these years. You've been the Phil Jackson of college football. And finally, things is catching up, man. Uh, You know, the grass is getting a little greener on the other side. And this NIL seems to be shifting things away from your favor. And Nick Saban don't like it, guys. Um, You know, he's out here complaining. He's telling everybody that Texas A&M bought their number one recruiting class. And who knows, man? They probably did. And that's just kind of the way the game is changing. Um, Everybody is buying players now. Basically, college, like I, like I like to say, is professional NCAA now. The times has just changed. And, you know, the days of Nick Saban just getting recruits because he coaches at Alabama might be coming to an end. And... He don't really appreciate it, man. He's not loving it. He's not feeling it. He's um he's calling people out. He called out Texas A and M. He called out Deion Sanders. He said Deion Sanders paid a player one million dollars, and our everybody knows he who he's talking about. Um, he's talking about Travis Hunter that you know was supposed to be committed to Florida State, and then. You know, out of nowhere, he kind of shocks the whole recruiting world and ends up at Jackson State with Deion Sanders. And, you know, a lot of people said maybe he just picked Jackson State because he wanted to learn from the best cornerback that ever played the game, Deion Sanders. That's understandable. But a lot of people said he got the million dollar NIL deal with Barstool Sports. And we don't know if that's true or not. I haven't never really seen if that's been confirmed or not, if this kid received money from Barstool Sports or not. We all know that Deion Sanders was an employee of Barstool Sports, so we just automatically assumed that Deion is using his connection with Barstool and he's using it to recruit players. But the thing is, Deion Sanders publicly seems to be very very um not necessarily against but he has a very negative um opinion of what nil is doing to the game he feels like nil is kind of causing a lot of chaos it's kind of making it to where you know a lot of these players feel entitled they're not hungry he wants to coach hungry athletes that want to get it out the mud that want to come and play for him and learn the game and become the best players they can be and move on to the nil i mean to the nfl and make money that's what he wants or at least that's what he's saying in public so you know as of right now i never really seen Dion confirm that you know he had anything to do with some players getting some money of course obviously he can't really come out and say it because technically NIL is supposed to be separate from school business. So with him being the head coach, he can't really just come out and say like, yeah, I gave the kid a million dollars. Because technically it's supposed to be the kids doing business with, you know, other companies or agencies outside of the NCAA. Not supposed to be receiving any money to go pay, to go play for any specific school. And, you know, Deion Sanders hasn't ever confirmed that. I'm sure Texas A&M, I'm sure their football program is the same way. They're going to deny that they paid any any players to come and play for Texas A&M. But obviously, like I said, I always go back to use the Texas Longhorns as my prime example of why we all know that they're paying players. Because at the end of the day, Texas's coach said that he needed help with the offensive line. And what happened? A nonprofit organization was formed called uh, Horns for Hearts or Hearts for Horns, whichever one it is. 
and they were paying fifty thousand dollars to any lineman that come to play for Texas and do a little charity work, right? So at the end of the day, that's the game. They giving these kids money to play for schools. They creating fake companies or you know whatever they got to do to get these money to get this money to these kids to get these kids on these campuses. And I think Nick Saban has a real problem with it because he probably has the most kids on any football program that probably are getting NIL deal and offers, right? So he probably has to manage and, you know, hire staffing, you know, accountants maybe to keep up with all of these kids to make sure these kids remain eligible, right? And I can understand what he's going through because, you know, with me being a a big Kentucky fan and me looking at like what Coach Calipari has to deal with, Coach Calipari only has to deal with like, what, 12 to 15 players? When you get like Nick Saban dealing with like 50-something players, you know, thing can get real tricky real quickly. It probably is really hard for him to keep up with all of these athletes and, um, you know, how much money they're getting, who they getting the money from. Are they eligible to play? Is it going to put them in jeopardy? And it's probably very frustrating, right? But at the end of the day, Nick, you can't call out the other coaches. You can't be salty about Texas A&M when you have literally dominated recruiting for years. I mean, years. I mean, you can just look at it like this. With me being in Kentucky, you know, even the Lexington, Kentucky area, right, or the central Kentucky area, however you want to look at it, the majority of the best athletes that we've had that came out of this area, they didn't go to Kentucky. They went to Alabama. We had Mark Stoops, Kentucky's uh, head football coach, flying helicopters to visit Damian Harris after his game. You know, we did everything we can to try to get some of these kids that was in the central Kentucky area to go to Kentucky, and they still went to Alabama. So at the end of the day, Nick Saban, it just your time just might be up, brother, and you might just have to chalk it and take the L like everybody else has been having to do for years when you've just been compiling the top 300 all at Alabama. You know, it just might be your reign is over, man. And um, maybe Texas A&M might be uh, primed to try to take over the SEC. You know, obviously, I would love for if anybody's going to knock Alabama out of their throne, I would love for it to be Kentucky. And we are coming. We on the rise. You know, we about to keep making noise. But right now, maybe it might be Texas A&M's turn to try to, you know, force their will upon the sec exert their dominance so we just have to wait and see how it play how it plays out but one thing nick saban man you can't be a salty loser you can't start calling out everybody you can't start dry snitching and hating on schools and other coaches just play the game you might have not ever had to recruit that way at alabama you've been fortunate enough to where you built a dynasty at Alabama to where you didn't have to worry too much. You, you know, you put the groundwork in and built the program up and then it was on autopilot. Like you didn't have to do all of the extra stuff. You just told them we Alabama, we interested in you come play for us, go to the NFL. And that's what's mostly been happening. So, you know, you might just have to realize that, them glory days of you being able to just walk into a kid's house and tell them you're Alabama, it might be over, brother. But anyways, you let me know, what do y'all think, man? Is Nick Saban dry snitching out here? Does he need to just sit back and chill and stop hating on Deion Sanders and Texas A&M and other programs that are being successful with NIL? Or does he need to just jump in the game and go hard too? I mean, he's still at Alabama, so... Maybe he needs to play the game the same way maybe Texas is playing it. 
Texas A&M and everybody else. You just got to jump in and uh, you got to fight fire with fire. But y'all let me know what y'all think. And we'll get back at it next time. Sports and Discourse, Derek Stevenson. Thank <sighs> you.